Welcome everybody here to the Beach House Grill. We're live for another edition of the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show right here on the Colorado State Sports Network. Hi everybody, Brian Roth here with you as we get set to talk Ram football upcoming here for the next 60 minutes or so. And uh, right off the bat, uh, give you a heads up if you want to get involved in the program. You can call 1-866-702-7691. Again, the toll-free number to get involved tonight, one 866 702 Six nine one Colorado State coming off a, a tough loss at home to San Diego State eighteen fifteen the final score in that contest this past weekend it was a Ram football team that played well in a number of aspects and uh, especially on defense where the Rams uh, really held Ronnie Hillman second leading rusher in the nation in check Hillman came in averaging one hundred and fifty yards a game Rams only held him to eighty yards at Ram defense holding a potency uh, San Diego State offense to three hundred and twenty seven total. Yards. And, of course, that run game for the Rams really got going again. Second consecutive week now that that CSU run game has gained traction. And it was the Chris Woke show as he ran for 232 yards on just 22 carries in the loss to uh, San Diego State. Fifth most ever in a single game at Colorado State. So Chris Woke now has a legitimate shot to perhaps be a thousand yard rusher here this year. The Rams uh, starting to get a little bit healthier in some regards, but the injury bug uh, is continuing to hurt the Rams in other regards. Of course, Pete Thomas, a uh, sophomore quarterback, got hurt on Saturday. We'll talk to Ram head coach Steve Fairchild uh, about his status coming up this weekend. And of course, uh, Garrett Grayson, another true freshman, got thrown in into action on Saturday against San Diego State. I thought he played well. I thought he looked pretty good, and he's going to get uh, a lot of playing time coming up on Saturday. Where will the Rams be on Saturday? They'll be back on the road. It's the final road test of the season for Colorado State. They'll be on the road at Fort Worth for the uh, final Mountain West Conference meeting with TCU, who of course is going to the Big 12 coming up next year. And TCU coming off a big win over Boise State here this past weekend, 36-35. And with the win, TCU went from unranked to number 19 in the latest polls. They sit at 8 and 2 and they have the inside track on yet another Mountain West Conference Championship. So should be a fun one here tonight. Happy to have everybody aboard. We'll be joined by the coach Steve Fairchild. That comes up next after this timeout from Elegant Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. All right, welcome back here to the Beach House Grill on a Wednesday evening. Of course, I had Steve Fairchild, Coach's Show, another great crowd in attendance here this evening. Uh. 1-866-702-7691, the telephone number here tonight. Brian Roth with you, and joined by the head coach of the Colorado State Rams, Steve Fairchild. Steve, good to have you back here, and uh, boy, a few more games left here in this season. The season's going by fast, isn't it? It really has. It, uh, you know, even with two buys, it, it just has, has moved pretty quick this year. And um, I don't know if it's just because we've had a lot of people in and out of the lineup, and that's kept us a little more busy. Uh, you know, during game planning weeks, but it just seems like you, you each week you wake up and it's Thursday and you're kind of on your last day of practice and your last day of preparation. So, um, but it's been fun. It's, it's been, like I said all along, it's been a great group of kids to be around. They're really hardworking and um, really have a great want to about them. Again, the Rams coming off that heartbreaking loss on Saturday against San Diego State, 18 15. A, a last minute field goal by Abel Perez of San Diego State would, prepare, would uh, propel San Diego State to the win. And, uh, well, you know, that's an Aztec team that came in with the second leading rusher in the nation. And I know they control the clock on you, but I thought your defense really played well against a very good offense. Yeah, you know, with them, they were completely different than they were the year before. You know, the year before with those wide receivers, you were. Uh, afraid every time they draw back to pass. This year, coming into the game, you figured you had to take Ronnie Hillman out of the game. And I thought our defense uh, players and staff and everybody did a nice job. We we bottled him up about as good as you can and stopped the run. That gives you a chance to win. We had a little trouble getting off the field on third down, and um, you know that might have been the deal there. But uh, uh, we did stop the run. I, I just like the way our entire football team, both sides of the ball, played physical and. Uh, kind of got after him a little bit and you know we were able to get some run game going which against Rocky Long's defense is sometimes hard to do so a uh, good physical football game but uh, just came up a little bit short. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, again the time of possession ha have you ever been in the game where you've only run four plays in a single quarter? Yeah that was that was strange it just uh, you know before you know it it was we were into the fourth quarter yeah. and we were playing playing pretty well on offense uh, but it just uh, the way that thing 
came about. And you know, with the fact, the win, and, and the factors that uh, played Saturday night, you know, everybody's handing the ball off, and that and that clock just keeps running and uh, really, really shortens the game. Well, you mentioned the run game, and uh, it was good for the second straight week. And, and I know running the ball, you've said you guys have been close, you've been close, you've been close, and then you and LV, you go for 250, and then you rush for uh, 245 on, on Saturday. But the run game, what has been the key the last two games for that Ram run well, game? Well, I think it's had its moments all year, but it's, you know, we've steadily been getting a little better, a little more experience in the line. You know, we've had some guys in and out of there, so that's, uh, uh, you know, been an issue. But I, I just like the way Chris Wolke's kind of, come into his own here the middle of the latter part of the season. He's, uh, you know, he's one of those backs that the more you give him, the more carries you give him, the better he's going to be. He kind of just, you know, there's nothing pretty about him, but he, you know, he just keeps hammering away. He's a real physical type of back. And uh, boy, to watch him finish the way he's been finishing runs has uh, really been impressive. And, and he's got the ability, like Artrell did uh, back in 08, to wear, wear the second level defenders down. And, he, and he's starting to figure that out and really, really been impressive. You know, there's a sports cliche that the, the light has gone off for a player, and I know that's thrown around uh, a lot, to, but has the light kind of gone on here for Chris Woke? Well, I think everybody, I, I don't know if it's a, a, a flip of the switch as much as just as you play more you at every spot, you just get better. I mean, there's no substitute for experience. And, uh, you know, Chris just came into the year as a redshirt sophomore and had limited carries as a freshman, played some, but... Uh, you know, now he's starting to get into the flow as, as a, you know, a starter, so to speak. So um, he, like the rest of them, the more, the more they play, the better they'll get. He's a talented young man. There's no question. Yeah, and I imagine after his performance against UNLV, where he goes for 156, and I, I didn't realize that was his first ever career 100-yard rushing game. He had been right. close, but he goes for 156. And, and I imagine, you know, you can say you're confident uh, all you want, but confidence is earned. And right. all of a sudden, you go for an effort like that. You have to feel good. Well, that's that's what I'm talking about. You know, he hadn't had a 100-yard game, and that, that wasn't because of ability. It was, you know, we just hadn't had him in there. The year before, we had some other guys who were playing uh, as well. But, you know, his turn came up, uh, you know, he, and he's produced. And, you know, he, like you said, he went over 150 on the road and then came back. And I think he set the Hughes Stadium record uh, for rushing. And, uh, you know, he's got good days ahead of him. He, he'll keep getting better and better. You know, he'll be the first to admit he's not – you know, doing everything right either. And, and, uh, but for a young back, uh, you know, he's got a bright future. There's no question. Yeah, he carried it 22 times in that contest. Is he the type of back that you can continue to give it to 22, 23, 24 times a game? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go too much more than that. Guys wear down. And, I, you know, I still think we need, um, you know, to have, have other backs in there playing. And, and we're trying to get Derek Good in there as well. Uh, but there's no question that Chris, you know, as the game gets going, he, you know, he, he kind of plays better. And the more carries he gets, the better he is. So, uh, you know, that's why the last two weeks we've kind of increased his load a little bit. And, and, and he certainly made it pay off. Again, 232 rushing yards on Saturday against San Diego State for Chris Woke. It was the fifth most all-time in a single game. Tony Alford ran for a... Uh... 310 at Utah. Were you around for that contest? Uh, you know, I think I was coaching the league, but I was not at. I was not okay. on. You know, on the CSU staff at that point. Yeah, but 310 yards, Tony Alford. I think it was. Uh, now you weren't here yet. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, and nonetheless, it was on the road at uh, Utah. We seem to talk about injuries each and every time we come on the show and and I, I don't know what it is about this season for in the injury bug with CSU but it is uh it has bitten again Pete Thomas goes down uh, uh, your thoughts on that injury what are you guys thinking with Pete well you know right now he's day to day uh he did not practice uh today but we'll see where he's at you know there's a chance you know obviously he's at every rep this year so uh there's a chance he could uh you know, feel good enough about that leg to, to go ahead and make a goal of it. But we won't know that until Friday or Saturday. Uh, you know, what's what's hard, I, I think Garrett Grayson's a very talented kid, but we were planning on redshirting him. And when you go through the week at the quarterback spot, you really just get one guy ready. And, um, you know, so Pete was taking all the reps and Garrett was doing the best he could to to watch and learn and pick up what he could and, and get an occasional rep here. So when a guy has to go in underneath those circumstances, it's very, very difficult uh, but I thought he did a nice job. I really did. It, the, it was not too big for him. You could tell by his demeanor that, uh, you know, he's going to be a very, very good quarterback for us. So, uh, you know, he's getting a few more reps this week, and we'll just see where he's at. This, uh, you know, it's a tough circumstance for him, but, um, you know, that's what, that's what it is this year. I mean, it's just, it's just been one of those years in terms of injuries. 
All right, we'll talk more about that and uh, much more here on the program. But first, uh, time out. Stay with us. You're listening to the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show live in Fort Collins from Elegant Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. Welcome back to the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show tonight live at the Beach House Grill, 125 South College Avenue. Of course, we're here each and every Wednesday night during the football season. But just a reminder, coming up next week, we will move the show from Wednesday to Tuesday night at 6 p.m., Still right here at the Beach House Grill, but with the holiday uh, week and Thanksgiving being that Thursday, we decided to move this show up from Wednesday next week to Tuesday of next week. That's Tuesday, November the 22nd, 6 p.m., and we invite everybody to come out and enjoy fine food and drink and talk some CSU Ram football. Brian Roth back with you along with head coach Steve Fairchild. And, and Steve, to talk a little bit more about that quarterback situation and, and Garrett Grayson, talk about what you guys saw with him coming out of high school school uh, uh, just outside the Portland area, Vancouver, Washington, and I know he had, uh, he had some pretty good credentials coming in. Yeah, he's one of the, the top 15 players in the state of Washington in his senior year. We were recruiting him, uh, as were a lot of people, and, and uh, I'd only planned on taking one quarterback in that class, and uh, we ended up taking Pete Thomas. And, uh, but we really, really liked Garrett, and, and, and not just his skill set, the more uh, when he visited and we got to spend time with him and uh, get to know him and his family. So we, we gave him an opportunity to, to gray shirt and kind of be the quarterback in the next year's class, which he, he opted to do. In fact, he went down to, uh, I believe it was San Antonio and uh, sat out the fall. And that, it actually ended up working with Ty Detmer down there. And But very, very talented young man, was very highly recruited. And, and I felt very fortunate based on the fact that we were going to commit Pete Thomas, that we were still able to get... Uh, Garrett Grayson. Now we were trying to do everything we could to redshirt him and put a couple years difference. You know, there's a year difference between them, but I was trying to get a couple there, and it just didn't work out because of Pete's injury. He still may be able to uh, redshirt at some point, but uh, uh, very, very talented kid. As is Connor Smith behind. You know, the young freshman that we brought in. So we're starting to feel real good about our quarterback situation. You mentioned the fact that uh, the redshirt option still a possibility down the road, and. And uh, you know, I was watching your press conference on Monday, and you said that you redshirted uh, what your Actually, third or my, fourth year. Yeah, my fourth year, and, and really, when you think about it, it's 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 uh, an option for both of them. It's an option for P. Sure. Th P. Thomas as well. So, uh, you know, it's uh, I just soon have a lot of talent at a spot as opposed to being dry at a spot. So, uh, we'll, we'll, it's a good problem to have. But right now, you know, because Garrett uh, played, we're going to play him in every game, regardless of, of Pete's situation and. Uh, make sure that he gets you know a little bit of a little bit of time here as the season goes out. You mentioned that uh, Grayson was a gray shirt, meaning that he, again he didn't enroll in fall. He came the next uh, January, so he was in spring football with you. Yeah. Uh, how much did that play into the factor of him winning that number two spot? Well, really, it, it's a major factor, and and that's one of the benefits of those kids that decide to gray shirt. You know, because they they end up getting a, a spring football, and then they then their five years begins yeah. in August. So. Uh, it's really an advantage. It's hard. It's hard on someone to sit out because they're used to being the, you know, big man on campus in high school, and then all of a sudden you're sitting out for a fall. But uh, if you ask those guys, you know, we did it with Matt Newton back in the '90s, and he ended up being a Mountain West Conference Offense Player of the Year. So uh, sometimes it can be a real, real advantage to do that. Do you have to talk kids into doing that? Well, it's got to be kind of a, a mutual agreement, you know, because it's not an easy thing. There are there are some benefits to it. There are some uh, things that aren't necessarily, uh, I'd say, there are some hardships to it as well. So, um, you know, it's, everybody's different, and if it's the right fit, which it was for Grayson, uh, then then you can go ahead and make it happen. So d seeing that Grayson's going to see the uh, field and a lot of playing time on Saturday, I figured I'd better read up on him. So I went and looked at his bio, and he uh, broke most of Washington's Class 4A passing records uh, in his career there, again, did there in southern Washington. Completed 73% of his passes his senior year, so obviously a very accurate passer. Threw for 2,700 yards his senior year, but also ran for nearly 1,000, and he played safety. So that tells you about the athletic ability, too, of Grayson. He's not just a thrower. Well, I, I, all our offensive staff wanted to recruit him as a safety. I was the only one that uh, thought this <laughs> kid's a good quarterback. So, uh, no, he was impressive. There's no question. He's a, yeah. a very, very impressive high school uh, football player at a good level of high school football. and. Uh, you know, we certainly recruited him hard. And we got a bunch of young guys in our program like that that 
Um, you know, as time goes on, they're going to start emerging, and we're going to, I think, really get this thing going. Yeah, so, so Grayson, you're telling me Grayson's a good enough athlete that he could play Division One football yeah, I'm on looking, the defensive side I, of the I'm ball. I'm looking at Pat Meyer right now. He was trying to get him as a safety. I, I said he's a quarterback. So, <laughs> wow, that's uh, uh, interesting stuff. Again, Garrett Grayson, uh, it's 6 of 15 for 26 yards, an interception, which wasn't his fault, a uh, fumble when perhaps he was starting to do a little too much. When you talk about reps now here in practice this week, does – does Grayson take all of them? Does he get most of them? Well, you know, when, when you look at a starting quarterback, uh, how much does the backup quarterback get on a We don't. Rate? You know, we just get one guy ready. So, so right now he's getting every rep at practice and, okay. and you know, as Pete's out. And we'll just uh, see where Pete's at as the week goes on. Uh, you know, getting back to that fumble, I, I almost uh, feel very bad for, for our football team and for our for Garrett Grayson on that play because that was, the, the, you know, I called that play and it was just a, a real – a mistake on my part to put him in that situation. It was just one of those uh, things that you need to be a guy, experienced guy, and have repped that play quite a bit to, to execute it right. And, and I went ahead and called it, and I, I should have known better. So, uh, you know, that fumbles on me. And one final thought on Grace before we uh, send it to break. I haven't had a chance to, to talk to you since the game, but. Uh, your thoughts on his demeanor on the sidelines because that's not an easy situation to be thrown into and then you know he all of a sudden hey you're the guy go out and get it done how, how did he handle that from from a demeanor point of well, view? well you know he had not only my eyes but everybody on him you know looking at him and to see how he was going to handle it and uh he seemed calm and very collective uh you know it didn't seem like the game was too big for him and you, you know you're always looking for the deer in the headlight looks uh, out of him, but you know we we try to make practice uh, for the quarterbacks harder than any game situation. I mean, we are just uh, brutally hard on our quarterbacks at practice, and uh, I'd like to think that they think a game's kind of a a, a break in the action for them. Uh, and and he certainly looked like that. It just uh, uh, he's hard to rattle. I've been around guys for at all level for 30 years trying to intimidate quarterbacks at practice and and he's a hard one to get yeah. get rattled he's he's pretty pretty cool customer yeah i imagine you can tell the ones that you can rattle oh, just you can, like that there's that. no question you can tell the ones that are years away because you can <laughs> you can just break them at practice all right so again grayson gonna get a lot of playing time coming up against tcu on saturday plenty more to come here on the steve fairchild coaches show they get timeouts bring it back after this from elegant sports at the colorado state sports network uh, just about halfway through the program here tonight. Welcome back. Coors Live, Steve Fairchild, Coach of Show tonight from the Beach House Grill in Old Town, Fort Collins. Head Coach Steve Fairchild joining us. Offense Coordinator Pat Meyer also in the house. He'll join us later in the program as well as Senior Offensive Lineman Paul Madsen. Well, speaking of that offensive line and again, speaking of injuries, we hate bringing it up, but Weston Richburg, your fine center, freshman All-American last year, having an all-conference type of season for you here this year breaks his hand in that fourth period of play. And not only does he break his hand, but it's the right hand, and that's the hand that he snaps with. Yeah, all of a sudden, I, I didn't even know what happened. I just look up, and he's walking into the locker room, and, uh, you know, and Paul had a little bit of an ankle issue. So, I mean, it, you know, we are just uh, very, very thin at that position. But, uh, you know, we brought in Tyler McDermott, and, you know, we can juggle some guys around. And, and uh, you know, I thought our line really did a nice job. Like I said, we played a really – physical football uh, game against San Diego State uh, just was a thing of beauty to watch on the sidelines uh, and you know Chris got all those yards but I, you got to get started and, and uh, we did a nice job of getting hats on hats and, and getting him started in the run game you know one of the key plays running the football for you this year has been that toss sweep is to really get Chris out uh, on the edge and get him going downhill well the, the reason we can do that is is because of Paul Matson and uh, that's a very difficult play to to execute at the tackle spot, uh, but uh, if you're athletic and, and 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 quick and you know doing those type of things, you got a chance. And Paul, you know, Paul's a you know 300 plus pound guy, but when you watch him, he's he's cat quick off the ball on that thing, and and he can he he reaches defensive ends that are a lot wider than he is, and uh, and really gives us a chance to run that play. It's an impressive impressive thing to watch and it's because of Paul right here yeah Weston Richburg can he snap the football left-handed uh, I think he can and will you try that I think it's an option you know I think we'll still uh, 
kind of evaluate things during the week and, and you know we've got obviously Tyler's played some we've got a bunch of tackles that have played because of injuries you know just out of necessity so uh, you know and, and and Haynes has been doing a lot of different things for us you know he's he's been a guard that's played quite a bit but we've actually used him as a fullback and a tight end and and now a summit tackle so uh, there's some uh, you know options that we have there yeah, so will uh, will Richburg still play? Just well, we're not listing extended? him day to day, okay. and, and, and as the week goes on, we'll evaluate kind of how much and where and if he's available to play. But he's got a big club on his hand, all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it might be, maybe that can be a weapon for him. I don't know. So. <laughs> not sure if that's within the uh, rules. We'll go ahead and uh, uh, check that out. Uh, again, Colorado State has battled a, a rash of injuries here this year, but uh, Paul Madsen with that uh, sprained ankle, you said it uh, it shouldn't affect Paul too much, or or do you, do you affect it, uh, expect it to affect his playing time this no, week? No, no, uh, Paul practiced today, and Paul's looked good, and uh, you know, been a courageous kind of warrior all year for us. And, uh, you know, you wish, to do, you wish you had a team full of guys that, that did that type of stuff. All right, running a bit behind. We'll go to another break. Stay with us here on the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. Live at Fort Collins on the Colorado State Sports Network.